Blossom is back and welcome back to another episode of Top Drive and welcome back to me because I am back as you can see it's the backdrop you know it's the gray with the white lines I'm back in my apartment I'm back from the UK I'm out of quarantine let's make videos let's do streams let's do cannonball wait what oh it feels good to be back it's crazy the last time I recorded a YouTube video in these walls was the last video I recorded in 2021. Can you believe that? That was part 10 of the 10 million pack opening. And five minutes right after I ended the recording of that, I took my suitcases and I ran out the door because I was going to the airport to the U of K, baby. But anyway, I'm back and welcome back. Everything is back to normal. It's very hot over here. Anyway, RQ61, welcome back to Blossom's Ultimate Upgrade Guide. Today's art is brought to you by Turbo Martinis. All six of them representing every single turbo martini I have in my garage. So obviously, Blossom, if you have six turbo martinis, it means it's going to be a great car, right? <laughs> no. But anyway, let's get into it. 969, you know how it be. If there are some cars in here that say they have RQ62, it's because the pictures in Top Drive's clubs, where I source the pictures from, are outdated. But don't worry, every single car you see in this video, as of the date that I published this video, that means up to JPT, is RQ61. So let's get into it. Very pedestrian, very obvious, right? A bunch of four-wheel drive, all-surface tire cars. We got a couple performance tire, four-wheel drive cars, no off-roaders, and of course, one standard tire. I don't think anything here is out of the ordinary. One thing that might some people might, you know, question would be the Opel GTC concept, because this is a car that you could probably go six nine nine if you really wanted to but the opal gtc really isn't a twisty car because it's heavy uh how heavy you might ask i got my dual screen back boys so i can check it out for you 1600 kgs so not like bentley heavy but it's still you know it's more than 1500 so it is pretty freaking heavy and then the next one is going to be the subaru impreza wrx why is this 969 although it doesn't have traction control well the main reason for it is because it's from the 90s and mostly every four-wheel drive medium ground clearance car from the 90s lack traction control anyway if it doesn't have traction control and it's 2000 and before uh and, and 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 onwards then yeah definitely i would go the 699 route but anyway let's move on to 699 once again pretty pedestrian i think everything here makes sense a bunch of low ground clearance rear wheel drive cars or front wheel drive in fact nah 61 just rear wheel drive cars only 23 cars making up RQ61, which I think is pretty crazy. There are some cars, some RQs I've reviewed that have hit the 40s, but only 61 here. We started with three Aston Martins. We got one of each. We got an Estate, a, a Saloon, and a Coupe. Uh, we also have the Corvette C5, the Di Tommaso Guara. Really, the Di Tommaso Guara and the Dodge Viper RT10 really stand out from the bunch. Everything else is, you know, that is a rear-wheel drive performance tire car is pretty close-knit, you know, as so you have 4883 in the Mustang. Thing. You have 4783 in the Maserati, you have 4884 in the Chevrolet, and 4883 in the Aston Martin. Everything seems a dime a dozen, but the Di Tommaso Guara stands out with its handling, and the Dodge Viper stands out in its 0 to 60. I'll talk about those two cars later as well when we get into the tier list. And last but not least, the Nissan Skyline GTR R32. Now, this thing has outdated statistics, so over here on the right side of the car, you can see the statistics that it has in game right now, as of the date published of this video. It has has 5.30 to 60 and 83 handling. Now, this is a car that definitely I would 699 because the Nissan GTR R32, first of all, uh, once again, lacks traction control and it is low ground clearance. But really, why I want to go 699 on this is because I really want to focus on that handling. The 0 to 60 is relatively low as well, but this isn't a car that I would really use on the wet anyway because you can't even use it on a wet city streets because it's a low ground clearance car. Pretty sad story for the Skyline though. I preferred it when it had, you know, the old stats because that's when it had the old MRA. And back in the day, my Nissan Skyline R32 would have been 100% a 996 car. But after the nerf or the buff, however you want to call it, because they cut the MRA on the R32, but they also lowered the 0 to 60 and increased the handling. So it's just become more of a drag car and turned into a twisty car. So it's a twisty four wheel drive car or the Japanese version of the Dodge Stealth that we saw in the last episode of the series. Now, moving on, we move to 996. We have the Lotus Car.
Carlton and the Honda Pilot 4-wheel drive. The Lotus Carlton is one of those cars which always makes people asking questions in their head, or which always makes people lead to asking questions to other people, usually me, about how to tune the Lotus Carlton. Honestly, I myself had to ask my patrons in my Discord server, how the hell am I going to do the Lotus Carlton? And I re eventually the discussion boiled down to 996 because, hear me out. Every Lotus Ultra Rare in the game has amazing handling besides the Carlton, right? So why would you 699 this? Why would you focus on the handling on the Carlton when it's going to lose on every twisty track set or basically any track set that has a turn against any other Ultra Rare Lotus? 996ing the Lotus Carlton is basically going all in on its strongest stat, which is its MRA and its high top speed. Now, if you want to know what the MRA of the Lotus Carlton is, it is 84.89. Now, that is really good for an Ultra Rare and it has a very high top speed, over 170. That is more than what a lot of Porsches, BMWs, and Mercedeses can bring to the table, okay? Uh, and of course, we have the Honda Pilot 4-wheel drive. This is your dragster Japanese car. Basically, just a slightly better version of the Infinity from JPT. But what brings this thing down is that it's not from JPT. So if there are any JPT events, you want to use the Infinity anyway. And last but not least, either or suzuki c2 now although it's under either or i would tell you right now the first suzuki c2 that you get must always be 699 always but 996 in the suzuki c2 ain't bad either because it has an incredibly low zero to 60 and decent mra i mean it has 68.61 mra you want to round it off 69 <laughs> very funny um but yeah if you want to round it off at 69 mra but really it's actually 68.61 which is bad in a general sense but when it comes to jpt considering most subarus are in the 50s this one is actually not bad pair that with its very, very low zero to 60. I mean, you go 996 on this thing, and I think it has this lower, it has a lower zero to 60 than a roof BTR, if I remember correctly. Uh, although it has no top speed, but like I said, Either or, but the first one is definitely going to be 699. And last but not least, I want to talk about duplicates, okay? So Suzuki C2, you definitely need one 699 and one 996. And indeed, Tomasu Guara, just a fantastic car because A, it's lightweight. B, it has a lower 0 to 60. And C, it has really good handling. I know it has a, over 170 miles per hour for a top speed, but it really doesn't matter, man. The D Tomasu Guara has no MRA. It's 55.86. It's a Subaru. It's Subaru MRA. But, you know, the, the weight, the 0 to 60, and the handling all make up for it that making it a really good car and i'm putting it under duplicates but with that said let's get on to my priority wish list hey yo let's go welcome back to tier maker i am so happy i am so excited i just feel so rejuvenated to finally be back at my setup with my monitors with my camera with my keyboard my mouse pad all these things i didn't take to the uk with me i only took my laptop and my microphone, which is, you know, one of the, I love this microphone. It's absolutely insane. It's a Yeti Nano. Uh, one of my best friends actually bought this microphone for me. So Jonathan, I know you're not watching, but I love you, bro. Uh, but yeah, I'm just so excited to be back. I'm rejuvenated. You know, the trip in the UK was amazing. It basically refreshed everything in my head. I can play clubs nonstop for six hours all over again. Let's freaking do it. But anyway, let's get back to grinding out videos. Here is my tier list for RQ61. First of all, we got priority one, all players. At this point, I think everybody knows how the ranking goes. I don't need to introduce them one by one. We got the Suzuki C2 and the D Tommaso Guara. There's no surprises over here. Absolutely zero. These cars, you should get duplicates off because they are the best. One has, you know, incredible, well, they're both incredibly lightweight. One has an incredibly low zero to 60 for its RQ, and one has an incredibly high handling for its RQ. So really good cars, end of topic. Next up, let's talk about priority two. Now, first one, talk about it's the dodge viper rt10 baby like i said that thing has an incredibly low zero to 60 for its rq it stands out from the bunch what also stands out from the bunch is the chevrolet corvette c5 because it has the best handling and handling is everything it handles better than the aston martin v8 it handles better than the ford mustang gt it handles better than the repeat and the other repeat well the repeat and the repeat bertone jet and it handles better than the mercedes amg slc 43 it does all that and it it even has the 90s niche baby so it's a really good car as well i'll put it in priority to why you'd be a happy man watching this video next one the bmw x1 it has really good handling 75 i would say that this is the sweet spot the bmw x1 is the g spot for rq61 all surface tire suvs it's not heavy it's not super light, but it's still light. It doesn't have the best handling, but it's still good. And it doesn't have a bad zero to 60, 
but it's still decent enough where it's not that good, but not that great, but it has enough positives to make the BMW X1 actually a pretty decent car. It's very lightweight actually, coming in at about 1,500 kgs when you max it out. If you get it stock, it has 1,625. If you put it into comparison, it's only 25 kgs heavier than the Opel GTC concept. And once an SUV for crying out loud. Uh, we also have the Maserati Grand Cabrio S uh, MC and the Nissan Skyline GTR R32. Now the Grand Cabrio has that convertible niche. Um, also, it has an Italian Renaissance niche. And last but not least, it's the Subaru Impreza Gravel Express. Now, that one is the lightest one of the bunch, okay? This thing is freaking light. I mean, the, the Subaru Gravel Express only weighs 1,310. Uh, I was gonna say kilometers, but I meant kilograms, and it actually has decent MRA. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I don't know if I believe <laughs> what I'm seeing here on Top Drives Club, but according to Top Drives Club, the Subaru Impreza Gravel Express has an MRA of 70. 70. That means that this four-wheel drive all-surface tire Subaru has better MRA than most of the performance tire Subaru. <laughs> That's just absolutely crazy. I, I, I'm actually taken aback by that. That better be true. But anyway, it's incredibly lightweight and it handles pretty well. Not as well as the BMW X1, but it really makes up for it with how lightweight it is. It also has the two-tone tag and it is an estate. One of only two estates in the game that has all-surface tires. So that is a very, very powerful niche. Now, moving on to priority three, intermediate. I want to talk about the Aston Martins. All of them are, you know, just decent. They're average. They are the epitome of average. Honestly, when it comes to Aston Martin Ultra Airs, all of them are actually just really average. Some are actually pretty bad to be fair, but most of them are pretty average. The only Aston Martin Ultra Airs that stand out in my opinion, DB3S, Repeat S. End of topic. Anyway, moving on is the Super Impreza WRX uh, and also the Ford Mustang, the Cadillac STS, the Lotus Carlton, which might turn some heads because it has great MRA, it's a saloon, it's medium, it's a fantastic Ocean City Streets car. But the only reason why I'm putting it in intermediate is because it's average in a sense that it only excels in about one track set. Maybe two, if it's the, like, the, what is it, the two kilometer speed bump? Basically, anything with a drag that requires medium ground clearance, it's like the British version of the Charger Daytona, but here's the problem. The Charger Daytona is better. <laughs> it's a lower zero to 60, a higher top speed, a better MRA as well. The only reason that would set this and the Charger apart would be if the event was strictly saloons only. So because of that, it strives in very little um, uh, areas, the Lotus Carlton, but in those areas it strives in, it is monumental. So because of that, it's, it's average. It's, it really is average, you know, it's, it's hit or miss. Uh, Mercedes AMG SLC 43 as well. Handling just isn't good enough as the rest of the competition. Although the zero to 60 is low, the MRA isn't very good. The MRA is only 74.81. There are better options out there. Uh, Nissan Murano GTC, amazing MRA on this thing. So good in fact that people think that they should 996 it because it has MRA of 80. For an SUV, it's really good, but let's not forget that the zero to 60 on this thing is not worthy of RQ61. That is like RQ 55 or 53 even RQ uh, uh, 0 to 60 uh, numbers like it's very 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 bad and it handles really well it's the best handling SUV here so this car the GTC is a bit of a conundrum it's like you want to focus on its MRA or do you want to focus on its handling but either way, that 0 to 60 is going to drag you down. That is a really bad 0 to 60. 7.7. I mean, when you compare it to the Gravel Express, that is 6.5. That is a 1.2 second difference, okay? Like, that's why I'm saying that the BMW X1 is kind of like, it's like the G-spot. It's not amazing. It's not really low, but it's also not really high. But then again, it has better handling than the Gravel Express, so I have to put both of them together. And last but not least, the Opel GTC concept. Um, you know, it's a very average car. It has really good base stats, but it's heavy, and it has MRA of 45.86. Yikes. Uh, last but not least, well, actually not really last but not least, we talk about priority four for the advanced player. And as you can see here, BMW X6, very heavy, doesn't handle, move on. Maserati Levante Diesel, very heavy. Um, and then the Honda Pilot 4-wheel drive. I mean, this is a car that you only, that every player only uses once. It's that one Japanese daily. If you don't have a Suzuki Pikes Peak, if you don't have a Nissan Bluebird, and if you don't even have the Infinity from JPT, then you would use your 996 Honda Pilot for the hill climb. That is the only time you use it. So 
To be completely honest with you, I mean, in terms of the Japanese meta, it now has competition with the Infinity, so it can't really stand out as the only drag SUV, because this Honda Pilot actually loses to the Infinity on the one mile, it still beats it though on the hill climb, the quarter and a half. Uh, but yeah, moving on, the Maserati Levante Diesel, once again, just doesn't handle as well as well, and it's also very, very heavy. I mean, how heavy is the Levante Diesel? 2,205 kilograms. Sheesh. And last but not least, the Porsche 911 Turbo Martini. I freaking love this car in real life. I'm gonna be real with you, but this thing is useless in game. I have six of them maxed, and they've been maxed in my garage for about four years. Never once, not once in four years, has there been an event where I could use all my turbo martinis. You know how sometimes there are events in the game where there is a very niche ultra rare that ends up being the best, and if you use five of them, that is the best hand? I've always been waiting for that event for the 911 turbo martini, but it never comes. Every time there's like a 70s event, there's always a better car to use, uh, even if it's like ultra rare only. So yeah, the Porsche 911 turbo martini, it's a huge disappointment. Take it from me, someone that's owned, you know, six of them max for four years, right? Um, it has really good MRA though, 91 MRA, but the 0 to 60 is atrocious, the handling is okay, not good enough to be a twisty, but not bad enough, where the 0 to 60 is, you know, low enough to justify RQ61 if that makes sense. The Porsche 911 Turbo Martini is just the definition of underwhelming. Uh, and not in real life though, just in the game. And last but not least, the Mini. It's hot garbage. I do not care what you say about the Mini. I get that it's relatively light. I mean, it's actually lighter than the BMW X1 by about, you know, 20 kgs. But I don't care because it doesn't handle. If you, you, you get... If you get an SUV with four-wheel drive and also if it's tire car, uh, also if it's tires, you need it to handle. And if it doesn't handle, you need it to be a dragster. But it has 6.60 to 60. That is slower than the Honda Pilot. And the Honda Pilot isn't even good because it needs to compete with the AMG G63 and the Trailblazer. So yeah, the Mini JCW All 4 Countryman is a piece of crap in the game. Anyway. I hope you guys found this video helpful. It's nice to be back. It's nice to use my voice at 100,000% because I don't care about my neighbors here, but they probably want to kill me. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. I'm gonna stay safe, wash your hands, and blossom out. Peace.